Hi guys, just a quick update. I had a few days off with this uh, cold and sore throat that's doing the rounds, so uh, back to work today. And uh, apart from cleaning the, uh, the flux off of the joints, this is uh, pretty much done. Um, the only bit that's not connected are the uh, send and returns, which are the 222s on the left there, and the, uh, the 15 mil hot water uh, to the upstairs. Uh, that's not uh, connected yet, but uh, the rest of it's all done and uh, and connected. So I'm just going to run through a, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> we've uh, used a Fernox TF1, and there are some pretty big uh, connections to do up here, and uh, you'll find that the actual body of this gets in the way. Um, but if you look on the side here, there's a couple of rings and just in there before you fit this obviously you can put a spanner sorry, <laughs> you can put a flat screwdriver blade in there and lever this out and then that allows the body just to pull out a fraction and then you can turn it and uh, because this is uh, the body is offset you can swing it horizontal one way and it completely clears this and then you spin it 180 degrees round and uh, it gives you full access to all of the joints here. Um, this is you know quite a clever piece of gear and uh, you can isolate it so normally you would have it in the uh, the on position this is fitted to the uh, return pipework and uh, there's a very strong magnet in the top here and uh, it over you know over the months it will accumulate loads of junk uh, muck and uh, particles of metal and all sorts and it all drains out of here so what you would do you would turn the boiler off uh, you would then isolate it pull out the magnet so all the magnetic particles that it's collected will just fall into the bottom uh, there's a key on the end of uh, I don't know how tight you take the drain cap off there's a little key on the uh, on here and uh, that would then go in here and you can open that up and then you can just open one of these valves just a little bit just to flush it clean and then shut the valve lock that up pop this back on and uh, and then uh, pop the bag magnet back in and uh, open the valves, let it fill up, see if it's affected the, uh, the pressure in the system. If it has, just top it up and uh, away you go. So we have, uh, as I say, that's the return. We have 15 mil water in and that was connected to all the, the stuff there. Pressure, vessel and uh, the scale inhibitor. <coughs> Now uh, this will be the gas in isolation valve. Both of these are obviously full bore isolation uh, isolation valves. That's important. You don't want a, a, you know, a normal sort of uh, valve. You get a washing machine in there or something like that. So full bore uh, valves. Uh, these I am still waiting for the smaller versions, but these are uh, quick fit uh, earth clamps. Um, not seen these before. I think they're a fairly new thing out, but uh, it looked like it was a better idea for outside use. And these can be used in corrosive atmospheres uh, and damp atmospheres. So I guess it's far more suitable uh, to being fitted outside. But they literally just push, twist, and they're clamped on. There's a screw in there that you do up to secure it, and then the cable runs in and through there and clamps up. So. As I say, I've got uh, three fitted on the 22s. I've got a couple of 15s, uh, three 15s ordered, so that will all be bonded. Um, what I'm going to do is take that wire and it will be unbroken. Don't be using little loops through, you know, to each one. That needs to be one piece of wire and just bared for that connection. You bear it here, here, here and here. So there's no break in the cable. That's quite important, that one. Uh, I'm going to run that actually outside and it's going to run back to where the earth bonding is 
going from the meter outside um, to the uh, fuse box. So if anything happens, the earthing here will be straight next to the other clamp uh, on the copper pipe that is linked straight back to the electricity meter. Uh, so if a joint ever broke on the pipe work, you've still got the earth bonds here uh, back. And I think that will you know, conform to all the regulations. Um, I'm going to look down on that manifold. Uh, a good tip here, I think, is if you cut one section here the correct length, then at the same time, connect a collect. Oh dear, I can't speak today. Once you've got one piece the right length, cut the other 22s uh, so you've got those ready for when you're doing uh, the other pipes on the manifold. Same with the 15, uh, you need two of those, so once you've cut one, measure the other pipe and just cut it ready. I have, because this is quite tight to, uh, to fit, uh, and of course you must you know, do all this work with these uh, nuts uh, loose, so you can uh, pull this manifold backwards and forwards a little bit. As you know from the other videos, you just loosen these screws at the end and you can lift it up and pull it forward a little bit. But I did decide to solder um, some parts of this in situ, um, so you know there's a few blobs of solder that stripped down that I couldn't get off just because uh, of the access. But I've cleaned those up. I've got to uh, just get some uh, flux remover on there and just give them a last clean. It doesn't matter how hard you scrub the copper, you can have that back to lovely shiny copper and within about three hours it's all tarnished again. So. You know, well, you can see I've done that one today, it's really nice. That one was done a few days ago and it's all tarnished and looks horrible again. Um, so, looking down, we then have on the uh, feed, hot feed to the rads, we have a uh, salamander uh, corrosion uh, guard. Uh, again, this is uh, just, I think this particular one actually, is removing the oxygen from the water and it's got a zinc uh, anode, I think. Uh, it looked like it was just a screw that had been screwed through the body and was just left in the water flow. And it just converts the oxygen in the water, uh, I'm guessing to zinc oxide then, if it's got a zinc anode. Um, I'd have to look that up online, but I'm guessing that's what it's doing. But it's certainly taking the oxygen out of the, uh, of the system. Um, so yeah, then it's just teed off to go upstairs, uh, same with the return, but I've teed that off under there and uh, this board just needs to be cut, slotted and slid back into place. Uh, no doubt we will uh, just box this in at some point um, when it's all finished. So yeah, really the next stage is to uh, connect uh, up there, up into the loft. Um, I've got some pipes there that I've pre-bent and they just need to go uh, up and be angled to lie flat on the loft floor with the pipe bender. And that was the idea. Or well, the other way is just to get in there with some uh, copper 2290s and just have a little fiddle around and solder them up and into the loft space where they'll go on to, um, uh, go on to the plastic. And uh, yeah, of course we've got a hot water tank and a uh, water tank above it, so that will, well, what I'll have to do there is work out which is the, the cold mains and uh, the hot feed to the other parts of the house. And the 15mm pipe will go into the hot feed, the tank and everything else will come out. I'll probably have to do it all on the same day. Uh, but actually at the moment if I cap those off and fitted the boiler and had the gas connected you could uh, actually fire this up and run it just for downstairs. Um, I can't think of any other uh, tips really. You can see I've used quite a few uh, pipe um, clamps on the wall just to keep everything secure, especially around uh, anything heavy uh, like the the corrosion, anti-corrosion device and the valves, things like that. Um, so really it's just a matter of uh, lifting the boiler in now and uh, we've got to do the flue upstairs and oh, obviously all the electrics I've got to uh, 
fit sockets. Uh, the uh, FW100 is on that wall the other side, so I've got to drill through there. Uh, in fact, I may have already, I've got a sneaky feeling I've already drilled through there for the cable. And that's just going to run down the wall and around in some uh, conduit that we bought and, uh, you know, into, into the boiler. Now, I'm not exactly sure where the cable runs need to go. Uh, obviously, I'm going to fit some sockets in here. There will be an RCD protected spur for the boiler. Um, the boiler is very, very low electricity consumption. Um, but as I say, I'm going to run that off an RCD protected spur. I uh, just don't know which way to uh, run the wiring yet because I haven't looked at the, uh, uh, the, you know, the actual boiler itself. I'll have to get a look at the installation instructions again for uh, that. Um, obviously we've got the uh, exterior sensor that came with the FW100 uh, and I'm wondering if that hole is there for a particular reason. Um, it may be that we can you know, just drill through that and then run the pipe and the cable around for the exterior sensor. So I'm not, not sure about that. These uh, two bits are just pipe guides so you can actually have all of these pipes uh, coming up and uh, running this side. In fact you can buy a, uh, a ready-made uh, manifold pipework uh, thing that just you know goes into all of these and then runs up and up to the top just to make life a hell of a lot easier and then you just make all the connections up above the boiler somewhere. Uh, God knows how much that costs, I, don't know. I never did work to have a look at that because we don't really need it. I wouldn't want all of this up above the boiler in our situation. Uh, so that's it and uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting. There's the flue boiler on the floor. Definitely a two-man job unfortunately to uh, to lift that up, um, yeah, otherwise I would just lift it up now and see about where all the wiring goes and then lift it off again. But uh, only me here, so I've got to wait for uh, someone else to come along and give me a hand with that. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll update you soon.